Although this city was established just 50 years ago, what we now know as Port St. Lucie has a rich natural heritage. I'm Councilwoman Michelle Berger. I love spending time outdoors in this beautiful city, exploring everything from oak hammocks to winding river passes. So come along with me on land and on water. I'm Port St. Lucie bound. This quiet 97-acre site has two self-guiding interpretive trails that meander through mixed scrub and marsh. A wide variety of plants, trees, and wildlife calls Spruce Bluff home. Close to the banks of the St. Lucie River, this property has two separate and very unique paths. Hey, I'm here with Mike Middlebrook from St. Lucie County. You're a biologist with St. Lucie County, right Mike? That's right, yeah, I'm the lands biologist for all the preserves in the county. Awesome, and we're here today in the St. Lucie area, Bruce Bluff, and my understanding is that uh, this was originally a pineapple plant, so I brought you a pineapple from my home, from my yard, not from Publix, uh, to give to you and say thank you for doing this, a little hospitality. Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate you taking some time today to kind of talk with our PSL residents and give us some really in-depth background about what's in our backyard here. Yeah, this is a great, great site. And like you said, the pineapple plantations was a big part of the role that happened here. So basically in the Armed Occupation Act, which happened after the Seminole Wars, um, the U.S. government encouraged settlers to come to Florida and settle the areas where there was occupations of uh, Native Americans and uh, to encourage settlements to occur down here. And part of that was to bring some agriculture to the area. And if you came to the area and stayed on a piece of land, selected a piece of land, and lived on it for five years and actually produced some agriculture, the land would become yours. Oh, neat. So a little incentive there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, around the 1890s, Spruce Bluff began here. Um, John Fultz actually moved to the area, liked the area. He was right off the St. Lucie River. Mm -hmm. um, decided the area would be great for pineapples. Pineapples were very successful up in Fort Pierce and Stewart and these areas. This was a little more inland than most areas, but uh, great because they had water access and able to transport crops out of here. Mm -hmm. And uh, a very interesting history. So we have uh, about 165,000 people now in the city of Port St. Lucie. How many settlers were there in those beginning days? In those beginning days, it started off with one or two, became 10 to, tw 10 to 20, you know, it was all families, smaller families that came to the area. And uh, it was very remote here, very, very, uh, the closest areas were Fort Pierce, yeah. up the river and Stewart down to the south. How did they get here? Uh, mostly by boat, yeah, mostly by boat. And uh, it had some rich, rich history already. And uh, this area with the wetlands we have out here was high and dry also, because we have some scrubby areas. Oh, okay. So it became kind of well known. So tell me about what life was like at Spruce Bluff at that time. Yeah, it was more or less like it is today. I mean, the way you would find the preserve when you're here. All these mosquitoes too? Lots of mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. They didn't have insect repellent, so uh, life was a little hard. They had the Florida heat to contend with. Uh -huh. um, you know, typical Florida weather, hurricanes, tropical storms. You know, basically as you find it now with all the natural uh, resources here, it was primarily probably the same. Uh -huh. um, they did some timbering here also, which was, you know, part of the area they had to clear to uh, create crop crop lands for even citrus and pineapple. Do you have any idea what the crops looked like, like how big they were? Yeah, uh, they ranged anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 to 60 to 100 acres. It, it, it really just, uh, you know, depended on the, the resources that the settler had. Um, it, it could have been as large as, you know, the area would have afforded. So then when they needed to get that crop uh, in and out or, or when they needed to transport the crop, it basically went by boat out the uh, North Fork, right? Yeah, the roads weren't great around here. We had a lot of waterways, so, and then the river still exists here. So that was the best way to just ferry stuff into town. And then they would ship it even up north through the Indian River. So, uh, you know, it, it was very accessible by water, which made it a great place to live. But I mean, you had to contend with all the elements. Yeah, so the elements in Florida, especially at that time, obviously no air conditioning, were a hazard. For most and that's why these incentives were put out there to get people to come down here so what other hazards were out there other than the weather for the early settlers in port st lucie well and given there was some war periods just before this ac ac um, occupation act um, so there were territories here of native americans that you know maybe not necessarily hostile but mm -hmm. there was that potential um, and you know we had a lot of conflicts with other settlers here different trades going on and uh you know, it was really just kind of finding this place and, and you know, setting 
setting everything in motion. Well, it is beautiful. While we're out here, I just love the way it looks. It's so absolutely natural Florida. and reminds me of, um, you know, how amazing it could be just to walk right off of the streets that are out here, very suburbia, right? And then take a little trail and then feel like you're walking back in time. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great place to go and just kind of, you know, imagine w what settlers had to deal with uh, back in the day. And then also just to see the beauty here because it is tucked away off the neighborhood and it's kind of nestled in the heart of Port St. Lucie, but it's still here and preserved. The sights and sounds are beautiful. Yeah, it's great. You can't, uh, you can't beat it, really. I mean, in my trade, I, it's just what I love what I do. you got an awesome job. Why don't you take me for a tour, yeah. and then we'll bring the cameras and kind of show everybody in Port St. Lucie what's back here. Yeah, we'll go down and take a look at the memorial. Perfect. Let's do that.